Good morning, guys. This morning we are working on number 15 of our unit assessment, which is your first writing prompt. So I wanted to talk about it with you real quick and make sure you're clear on what the expectations are and what to do. So number 15 asks you to look at the points of view in a perfect day and a fall hike at Cutler Pond. So what we need to make sure we understand about point of view is that this is... Um, in, in this situation, they're asking you how the character um, feels, basically about what they're seeing or doing um, and the differences. So when we looked at A Bird's Free Lunch and the writing of John Burrow, we saw that one of those characters really wanted to take in all of nature, kind of be a separate from nature, not be a part of nature, not interfere with nature, and just take it all in and look at everything that was around them. But then, like in The Bird's Free Lunch, not a writing from John Burrow, my, my, I'm sorry guys, the other one, um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but the one with the little boy who went and sat and looked over the prairie. But then with The Bird's Free Lunch, John Burrow you know, was worried about the kinglet, he was feeding them with bird feeders, he was... Nature made them both happy, but they both interacted with nature differently. So this is kind of the same thing. The point of view from a perfect day. How, how are they thinking? How are they feeling? Um, so we can even add that, how the character thinks or feels. Um, and so how that's the same and how it's different in these two stories. So when you look at these two stories, you're going to be looking for thoughts and feelings of your character or your narrator, whoever is the one speaking in the story. I've created a um, top hat for you, which is an organizer, for you to organize the differences. So in these first two blocks, you'll put how a perfect day is different from a hike at Cutler Pond in these first two. And I've added little bullets just to help keep the things that you list separated. And at the bottom, how are they alike? How are they the same? Okay, and once you have finished that, you will take the notes that you've typed in these, um, these sections in this top hat, and you will create a, a short paragraph where you've combined them. So when you start to combine them, remember in your organizer, you don't have to worry about complete sentences, um, capitalization. It's a, it's a note-taking resource, so it's just a way for you to get your notes down and your thoughts down and your ideas down. But when you start to combine your ideas into your actual response, which is what we're really looking at, you're going to want to use your race rubric. Okay, so you'll type your response in the box below. And don't worry, as you get to the end, the box can get bigger. Okay, so don't worry about that. But we're going to look back at our race rubric and remember the expectations here. Now, we always want to make sure that we pay attention to grammar. And I'll say grammar, spelling, cap, I'm going to put grammar as I guess the title, but that includes spelling, capitalization, capitalization, and punctuation, because that is also part of your grade. But when you go to actually write your response, you're going to want to restate the question completely. So in our story, the question is, how are they alike, the points of view? How are the points of view alike? How are the points of view different? So in the two stories, A Perfect Day and A Fall Hike at Cutler Pond, the points of view are different because blah, 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 blah. They are alike because blah, 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 blah. Of course, you can use a different evidence-based term than because, but you're going to want to make sure you restate how the points of views are alike and different. Make sure you think about all parts of the question. The question asks how they're different and how they're alike, not just how they're different. Okay? Cite with evidence from the text. This is where we use our evidence-based terms. Okay? That is... Uh, in the text, it stated that the author said, um, I read that. Those You have those in your notes. You have them on other charts. So make sure you've used some of those words to let us know that what you're saying comes from the story. And then last but not least, you want to elaborate. So you're going to make sure that once you say this is how they're different, 
you're going to want to give some examples. Okay, the elaboration is where it kind of goes with citing evidence. So once you've said because and then you give us the, that reason why, that's your elaboration. So really, when it's all said and done in this box, you should have probably more than two or three sentences. If you've restated the question, that's going to be one sentence. How they're different should be probably at least two examples, so that'd be two more sentences, so that's three sentences, and then how they're alike should be at least one more sentence, if not two. So really, we should have more like five sentences when we're done, if we've used our race rubric, okay? Um, if you need to move this down to the next page if it bothers you to have the box split up you can do that too it's okay all you do is put your cursor here and hit the enter button and it'll pop down to its own page they have plenty of room to type that's up to you and how you like to see things when you're writing all right my friends you're going to do great we've been working really hard on using the race rubric and really thinking about our reading so you're going to do a wonderful job and i'm excited to read your responses for today number 15 we'll see you guys in just a little bit